Hello everyone. Today I want to talk to you about illness. So basically a good opportunity for her to talk about her energetic perspective on illness and give out some, well, fairly obvious advice and some quite bad advice as well. From an energetic perspective, healing is a toxicity crisis. Yeah, that doesn't sound at all like word salad. It occurs when people have been focusing negatively for a certain amount of time, and that causes the flow, the natural energetic flow through your physical body to get pinched off. Oh, of course, that's just obvious. Negative thoughts make you ill. That's the cause of illness. So the prevented flow of that energy moving through your body causes a buildup of a low vibrational energy. So getting ill is a question of negative attitude. In that case, next time you get ill till, we'll just blame you for whatever happens. You get cancer, your problem. Weak heart due to some kind of hereditary condition, that's your problem, negative attitude. You get the flu, your problem. The buildup of that largely low vibrational energy causes a cascade of physical events to occur, such as the shrinking of the thymus gland, which then leads to the weakening of the immune system. Yeah, the natural processes that normally happen with the body that are bound to happen and eventually your immunity drops in old age. Yeah, that's entirely down to not having the right kinds of thoughts, isn't it, Teal? All of this cascade of events in the physical body leads to the body being unable to rid itself of the toxins which it normally eliminates on a day-to-day -day basis. I think this is the right time to add, if you don't actually have evidence for these claims, your claims are merely a question of opinion, not a question of fact, not a question of science. Even if you claim to be an expert on the part of energetic vibrations and other such ideas, it doesn't mean you actually know these things to be the case, it merely means that you've thought of these ideas yourself, or, more likely, taken it from the work of others who talk about this kind of phenomena in regard to New Age beliefs. And that buildup of toxins starts to cause the cells in your body to decompose. It literally causes the cells of your body to weaken and to begin to die. Now this is the kind of embarrassing nonsense that New Age pumps out. The idea that positive thought alone can help you to have good health, or that negative thought alone cause you to have bad health. This is not the case. Positive attitude can help. Negative attitude to health can be detrimental. However, it's not a question of your consciousness impacting your genetic structure, causing you to decompose. As you can see, by what I previously said, bacteria and viruses are not the cause of the illnesses that we suffer. They are found in the systems of people who are sick because they need dying tissue to survive. Illnesses come to people regardless of their health. There are many conditions that do relate directly to physiological health, and there are certain conditions that can relate to psychological health, but that's to do with mental illness. Now let's talk about things such as a cold, as with the image you used, where you have a young man who appears to have a cold, perhaps a flu, these things can exist in very healthy bodies. You're not immune simply because you have excellent health and excellent psychological health. When they find an organism who presents the perfect environment for them to thrive in, they colonize. This is why not everyone who is exposed to a bacteria or virus actually gets sick. No, uh, people get ill for a variety of reasons. It could be a question of a particular virus is in you and you become a carrier of a particular virus. You might be affected in different ways down to your immune system or how your body operates, your metabolism and other concerns. There are many factors and there are different strains of viruses. Only the people who are unwell already, due to previously occurring factors, will be colonized by a bacteria or a virus. Not necessarily. People can be in bad health, but still have a robust immune system. However, a person with a weakened immune system, or a yet-to-be-fully-developed immune system, so that's to say old people, children, and the sickly, can actually suffer greatly, and are what are commonly known as danger groups when it comes down to certain illnesses, such as flu viruses. 
Teal Swan in her video makes a series of non-scientific claims. She makes a series of claims based on her beliefs, what she's read, what is common New Age belief. She doesn't actually prove anything. She selects that information to suit her point of view, puts it together into a very long video. And here are some of the best parts that I've selected for your delectation. It is not the viruses and bacteria which is causing the illnesses which you are suffering. The first condition going into this was stress. Stress is the number one causer of illness. You could think of stress as any negative thought which gives rise to the brain releasing stress chemicals throughout the body. Avoid soda like the plague. Saying that bacteria and viruses cause disease is like saying that flies cause garbage. Rejecting an illness is highly stressful to the body. Whereas when you're accepting an illness, you're allowing that flow of energy to move through your body and you're moving just that much closer towards understanding the true reason behind why you have fallen sick. Instead of seeing it as a negative event that you should fight against or feel shame for having manifested, see it as an opportunity to become stronger in your areas of weakness and to live a happier life that is even more enjoyable and in alignment than before. When we choose to view it as an enemy, we are killing it. We are killing our own body with our mind. It is the cough, which is expelling many of the things in your body, that by suppressing it, you would be keeping in your body. You can make crystal water by putting crystals in your water and letting them sit for at least 10 minutes. And when the energy is prevented from flowing through your body, the cells of your body cannot thrive. UV light is actually a natural germicide. Do not eat sugar. Do not eat caffeine. Do not eat white flour. Those are all poisons. The less energy your body has to put toward digesting things, the more it can donate to healing. A virus is just a manifestation of a vibration of collective negativity. If source instantly becomes what I want, it can only ever be benevolent. Any positive focus will cause you to come into alignment. Many in the medical community will tell you that an autoimmune disorder is the body attacking itself. When toxins settle in the body, the body attacks those toxins. It may appear as if the body is attacking itself, but it is not in fact doing this. The body is not suicidal unless you yourself are suicidal. I do not need to resist the virus. My body will do exactly what it is designed to do. The human body is a marvel of technology. It's a machine of flesh and blood governed by the mind. It will enable the energy to flow through your body. Much of the fear you've been fed with regards to sunlight is propagated by those that stand to financially profit by this fear, and it stands on very shaky scientific research. Sit in the sun with no sunscreen on, no sunglasses on, and as little of clothes on as possible. I'm not saying bake yourself in sunshine. In order to maximize sunlight exposure without getting burnt, don't go outside from 10 o'clock a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m. Illness brings great opportunities with it. When I am throwing up, I am ridding myself of anything that doesn't serve me well, my old patterns, as well as the sickness itself. And if you're able to focus positive towards the illness itself, the illness, the negative byproduct of the illness, can no longer be a match to you. You will find instant improvement. You want to drink plain, pure water. Spring water, filtered, or artesian well water is best. If you can, try to avoid tap water, because many of the chemicals contained within tap water are not a benefit when it comes to healing. I want to begin by giving you an example of how I became a match to a chest cold last week. <laughs> Illnesses and wounds give rise to levels of pain according to the belief about them. For example, an illness or wound that is seen as bad is going to produce much more pain than one that is seen as good. In World War II, many doctors reported that the wounded soldiers did not require pain medication because they felt that their wounds would get them to safety in a hospital back home near their own family in their own country. Their wounds were seen as a blessing, and so they did not cause these men the tremendous amount of pain and trauma that the exact same wound caused men who met with accident in civilian life, who spent their time focusing on the fact that injury meant loss of mobility and health and loss of financial resources. You really should admit it. You don't know enough to give an expert opinion. Your facts are selected, and very often out of context, 
Therefore, I would advise anyone who takes advice from such a new age expert to think twice and look again at the facts. And if needs be, talk to a professional.